Hello, I am Ishaid Islam and I am a software developer. In this video series, I will cover claim based authorization in a .NET Core 6 and I will integrate in Angular. This is a part one, so let's start. What is authorization? Authorization is a process of determining whether the user is able to access the system resource. Authorization comes after authentication. In authentication, we verify the user by username or email and password. Then the authorization process start. Let's understand with example. We have a resource that can be a file or database and one user try to access. So in authorization process, we will check that whether the user can access this file or database. If this user has a permission, then we will allow to access. Otherwise, we will not allow. First, we will discuss role based authorization. You can watch my videos on role based authorization link in our description. So what is a role based authorization? When an identity or user is created, it may belong to one or more roles. For example, Teresa may belong to administrator or user. We know admin has more permission than user. Role is a collection of permissions that you can apply to users. Roles can be thought of as a job titles like admin, manager, teacher, and user. We have manager role who has following permission, add employee, edit employee, delete employee. We can assign this role to any user we have three users who has manager role. All of them can add employee, edit employee and delete employee. Let's suppose we want to remove delete permission from Ron, but Bob and Frank can delete the employee. If we remove permission from manager role, then all of them will lose this permission. So we cannot customize the permission in role based authorization, but we can do in a claim based authorization. What are the claims? A claim is a name value pair that represent what the subject is not what the subject can do. Claims are not permissions. Claim do not replace roles or permissions. They are additional pieces of information that one can use to make an authorization decision. Let's take example. You have driver's license and it's issued by government. Your driver's license has your date of birth on it. In this case, the claim name would be date of birth. The claim value would be your date of birth. Claim based authorization at its simplest, check the value of a claim and allow access to a resource based upon that value. For example, you want to visit a place where the minimum age requirement is 18. You can show your driving license to the door security officer who would evaluate the value of your date of birth claim and whether they trust the issuer before granting you access. We can define claims like this add employee, edit employee, delete employee, five year bonus. We will assign add, edit, and delete employee claims to the manager, Bob and Frank, and we will assign add and edit claims to manager Ron. So now manager Ron cannot delete the employee, but other managers Bob and Frank can delete the employee. So we have customized the permission of a manager by using claim based authorization. This type of permission customization is not possible in our role based authorization. One user can contain multiple claims with multiple values and can contain multiple claims of the same type. Let's take one more example where we will use role and claim. You have a school system and teacher can log in and see their students. Those teachers are under teacher role, but we don't want all teacher to see all students. So we need to differentiate same level of people with their claims. Mary, a math teacher, claim math, can only see math students. John, physics teacher, claim physics, can only see physics students. Adam, physics and chemistry teacher, claim physics and chemistry, can see physics and chemistry students. While all those three teachers are under teacher role, they can only see students with their corresponding claims. In this video, we will create project that will have following roles, admin, manager and employee. Admin can manage everything because he will have all claims Manager will have following claims, add, edit, delete and view employees so he can manage these things. Employee will be a simple user who can see and manage his profile. In this project, we will use .NET Core 6 and Microsoft Identity. Microsoft Identity provide many features to manage user. You can implement claim and role based authorization without Microsoft Identity. Then you have to create following tables and service user table to store user information for example name email of user etc claim table to store all claims 
role table to store all roles user role table to store user role one to many relationship one user can have many roles user claim table to store user claim for example manager claims one to many relationship one user can have many claims and you must write a service that will manage these tables you can use microsoft identity it will do above thing for you in this video we will use visual studio 2022 or you can use visual studio code now we will create project in visual studio when you launch visual studio 2022 you see this screen multiple ways to create projects in a visual studio you can see one option on a startup screen click on a create a new project select language c sharp all platform project type web api select this project template asp.net core web api click on next button type project name claim based authorization v6 location f drive v1 folder you can select different project location click on next button you can select different frameworks from framework drop down we will use dotnet core 6 you can enable or disable https for projects if you want https for a project then this checkbox should be checked this checkbox adds swagger in the project if it's checked click on a create button and visual studio will create a project these are the files of dotnet core 6 project in a dotnet core 6 no startup file they have removed startup file but now you can see the startup file code in a program.cs file actually they have merged the startup file and program file code in a controller folder we have one controller for testing in the program file you can see the startup file code in a program.cs file you can see the startup file code no curly braces we will discuss dotnet core 5 and dotnet core 6 changes in the next video now start the project from here and you can select different browser i will select chrome tab browser click on a play button You can see the swagger page. We have one controller that has this API endpoint. Click on get button. It will show the response model and other information. From try it out button, you can send API request to server. I will end this video here and I will continue this topic in the next video. Thank you for watching my videos.